Thousands of children are seen cheering and playing on the marina beach, enjoying the innocence and freedom of their childhood. There are also other children shouting and moving fast in the crowd, selling snacks and other small wares. Deprived of their childhood freedom, they have to work for their livelihood, for their survival. They do not have their parents to support them. Maybe these children are supporting their parents. Probably these child workers have migrated to the city or their parents might have traveled long distances from their village to arrive at the city in search of a job, a living. from foul smoke and dirty garbage, from filthy noxious gutters, away from the tense concrete jungle, its gruesome noise and the mad race of automobiles, away, far away from all corruption and pollution. To the clean, green rural landscape, pastures, fields, woods and streams with fresh, limpid water, and to the innocent company of simple human folk, The term child labor usually brings to mind the street children, the rag pickers, small factory workers, or the children in shops and hotels. All these images are urban, but there are 11 million child laborers in India, of whom the urban are only 1 million, whereas rural child workers number 10 million, that is 91% of the total. They are invisible child labor, invisible children. This has become a rare sight in villages, children playing games. The children, most of them have stopped playing and their games seem to have come to an irrevocable end. Only when we see a child working in a factory or working in some workshop, we consider them as child labor. But the real fact is that over 90% of the working children in India are concentrated in the rural areas. When we go through the countryside, we see children working in the farms, we see children working, working in tending cattle, we see children taking care of the siblings, but we never imagine this as child labor. Our general perception is that we see them as something normal. But if you look at the background of these children, most of the children never gets an opportunity to go to school. And so far, all the interventions on child labor is dealing only the visible forms of child labor. If you see all those children who are working in these visible forms of industries, that is less than 5% of the total child labor force in this country. But 95% of the children are working in the rural areas. Okay, basically majority of the children who are uh, working are uh, rural based and agricultural based children who are uh, working uh, more than 12 to 14 hours. And uh, the, these children are not fall under any uh, act or uh, government uh, rules and regulations where these children are defined as child laborers. That is the worrying part uh, uh, on, on the legal side, where the children were not defined as child labor in the labor department, and these children were neither students nor child laborers. 
in this context it is very important to address uh, rural children where not only rural children where we feel that all forms of child labor should be abolished ee papa ne enduku badiki pampetledu appudu pampela sir appudu ee aarthika paristhitilu valla pampetledu aarthika paristhithi ante mari em jarigalega nadu em chesthe pillalu madukunna kaalam em pani vadhe pillalu evaru madukuntaru ah anduvalla pampeledu causes of child labor belief in myths about child labor inadequate education system poverty illiteracy migration employment structure in unorganized sector occupational rigidities of the caste system proliferation of informal sector adult unemployment Nineteen ninety nine two thousand national sample survey shows that Andhra Pradesh leads the other states with the highest percentage of child labour. Let's begin there. Vandagallu is a village in the Karnool district of Andhra Pradesh. Agriculture is the main source of living, but with only one crop a year, the people had to keep looking up at the sky for rain. If they were lucky, four months of cultivation followed. For the rest of the year. they had to migrate to other places in search of a livelihood a new hybrid variety of cotton seed is cultivated with considerable profit to add to their profit they avail themselves of cheap child labor employing children preferably female below the age of 14 vandagallu has 291 households out of 416 with children in the age group of 5 to 14 185 households send their children for work the children in the other households are also ready to be employed cotton seed cultivation farms the employers would prefer to employ children especially who are less than the 14 years and also they would like to prefer girl children mostly there is a one specific myth has been floated that the girls who have not attained the puberty can only enter into the fields so by saying this by propagating this type of myth these owners can exploit these girl children and eventually their height and the height of the plant suit so that they can produce more number of pollination parent ha hangina babu paise enta paise enta sel sel मगल मगल आर गंटा When the children enter the cotton fields, they disappear behind the taller plants, and their labor robs the little ones of their childhood. Girls are being considered equivalent to the work. Girls means the work. The, 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 this thing is being started right from their home, and when they are being uh, lured away or taken away to any uh, to any industry or any place, like as a domestic helps or in stone quarries, they are being double exploited. They are not being given wages. They are not been though the wages are not been given to almost all the children, whatever they have been given a bit. But the girls are being more more exploited in the sense that they are not being physically abused. They are also being sexually abused. Kandul district. we have got 86501 children who are out of school and the majority of these children are engaged in hazardous occupation like mining cotton fields and other industrial activities like bead making etc the children are 
Another site for child labor exploitation is the Blackstone Quarry, the famous Kadapa stone which is in great demand. Here is one such quarry in the village of Palkur. The tough job requires grown-up male laborers, but children work as helpers in conditions harmful to their physical safety and health, inhaling silicosis dust all the time. The Constitution of India, Article 24 states, No child below the age of 14 years shall be employed to work in any factory or mine or employed in any hazardous employment. Orissa is a state characterized by acute poverty and underdevelopment. It is ranked very low on the Human Development Index. Malnutrition and hunger deaths are quite common. Fifty percent of the children of school going age are not in school, which is a major violation of the right to education. Rural child labor is much rampant in four districts. This sample village is Sindhi Padar in Kalahandi district. 139 out of 177 households have their own lands. Forests nearby are also used for shifting cultivation. But the children here mostly work with their parents. Every family has four or five children, and that means that an elder child takes care of the younger siblings. They also help in the household chores, like collecting firewood or bringing water. Lack of good roads, transport, electricity and communication render villages like Sindhi Padar inaccessible. The remote single teacher school has become irrelevant and hence remains closed.
West Bengal state had 6.3% of all child workers in the country in 1991. The district of Murshidabad is known for its dependence on the beady making industry. The villages here are prone to be affected by frequent floods and water logging which destroy the crops. Therefore, the people have given up agriculture and taken to the BD industry. Large families with their children can be seen working together, rolling BDs in a village like Baliagati. Now they know that this work is hazardous. Long-time inhalation of the BD leaves affects the workers with tuberculosis. According to a survey during 1996 to 1997, conducted by Murshidabad Authority, there were three lakhs of BD workers, and 88,000 of them were child workers. Our school team, two years old, is going. Our school, pray, shatadi chhatro chhatri achhe. Kin to ekhane dukhir visai. A BD pradhan elakai onik chhatro chhatri adhik pade school chhede the baad dhai. Baliaghati village has uh, some 700 children and uh, less than half of them go to school. Now, what do the others do? They don't go to school because they, they don't like the school and there is only one primary school which has uh, only three rooms which can accommodate, I think, uh, 150 children at a time. And uh, with the pressure of children, uh, the quality of teaching also is not up to the mark. The main problem with the BD workers and their children who are also engaged in the BD rolling along with their families is that they are exposed to all the health hazards which, which are seen in case of the adults. And since they are being exposed from their very tender age, the main problems which we see in adults, they are often exaggerated in case of children. I can give you an example, like the tuberculosis which you see in uh, the adults is much more common and much more hazardous and much more severe in case of children. West Bengal is above all known for its cultivation of jute and the jute industry. The rural child labor here is employed in collecting and seasoning the jute plants. The plants are washed and beaten to shreds in a stream carrying arsenic pollution and therefore it causes severe skin disease. Look at their hands. Employment in an early age seems to lead to an early marriage, children and misery. Girls tend to get married at 11 to 12 and boys at 14 or 15. Look at this girl child, Basanti Roy. She is married off in a hurry. The worst form uh, of child labor exists in rural India is the bonded labor system. We have come across the children who have been born in slavery and they were forced to work for their employer without their knowledge or without uh, any kind of convincing argument that why they are forced to work for that employer. Because their parents or even grandparents or great grandparents have borrowed a small amount of money from the parents or grandparents of the employers. 
And that's why the children are supposed to work and forced to work um, in agriculture sector, uh, looking after the animals, uh, fetching water, and so many other domestic and household things in the villages of landlords and the rich people. An abnormal life of all work and no play in childhood may cause mental perversions and even lead to crimes. Then the children may have to be detained in borstals meant for juvenile delinquents. Child labor and exploitation are not the only results of poverty. They also perpetuate poverty. The National Institute of Rural Development is advocating for mainstreaming the issue of elimination of child labor in all rural development programs. Henceforth, poverty alleviation will have to concentrate on families with child workers first. The rural development program should focus on the issues of children among the poor and vulnerable communities, especially in the child labor endemic areas. We should uh, try to mainstream the issue of child labor into rural development programs in such a manner that uh, whenever we are implementing rural development programs like SGSY, SGRY, Indra Avas Yojana, Pradhan Mantri, Sadak Yojana and other such important programs, we should try to ensure that the households in rural areas which are very poor and vulnerable and they have got working children in their household, they should be given preference in these programs with a view to ensuring that these households are given access and opportunities to improve their living condition and with their sustained income they are in a position to send their children to school. While the provision of free and relevant quality education is the most effective way to put an end to child labor, tackling poverty through rural development programs is another important dimension of the strategy. There is a need for a transition arrangement for older children who have already missed the bus of their formal education. All those children who are out of school, or potential child laborers. What is happening, if you see most of the child labor population in this country are in the age group of 10 or 11 plus. So those children who are even enrolled in primary schools in the rural areas, they drop out before completing five years of schooling. Then maybe they are keeping idle for a couple of years or only yet. Then gradually they start doing some work. And by, at the age of 11 or 12, they become full-time workers. So there is a continuum between out-of-school children and children who become full-time child workers. The International Labour Organization, from its inception, has made child labour one of its central concerns. It was the ILO in 1919 that stipulated that there should be a minimum age to enter employment. And in 1992, the International Programme on the Elimination of Child Labour or IPEC was established. ILO Convention 182 calls for immediate end to worst forms of child labor. Education and the elimination of child labor um, have to go hand in hand. Um, the ILO experience in working with our partners has shown in many instances that that can work, but that it is critical to ensure that education is part of it. To ensure that some alternative income opportunities are there. Um, various approaches are feasible. Um, in the ILO in particular we have worked with self-help groups of, of families, of women, um, to ensure that they have income to make up for income that is potentially lost when the children um, do go to school. But the overall lesson is that it is really a concerted effort that is needed. Um, and the district level seems to be the most appropriate level because the district collector, his colleagues, um, the communities in the district, the villages, can work together with the support from international agencies like the ILO 
um, our partner organization UNICEF um, to address the child labor um, problem. The Convention on the Rights of the Child, or CRC, adopted by the United Nations in 1989, is the most universally accepted human rights document in the history of the world. In April 2000, representatives from 185 governments met at Dakar in Senegal and committed themselves to achieve education for all by 2015. The estimate for this is $10 billion a year up to 2015. It is a small amount when you think of the global military spending, which is $839 billion a year. The government of India announced the national policy on child labor in August 1987. The strategy consists of enforcement of child labor laws, rehabilitation of child labor, prevention of child labor, improving the economic status of poor parents through various anti-poverty and employment generation programs. The program envisages identification, withdrawal and rehabilitation of working children through the National Child Labor Projects or NCLP. exclusive program for prevention of child labor that is uh, under the National Child Labor Project uh, NCLP. So there we have got 50 schools all around the district. Uh, every school having uh, every school is having around 50 students where these child labors, uh, erstwhile child labors, they have been accommodated and the uh, government is paying them monthly stipend also. So they are uh, pursuing their studies and after three years of studies they are being main mainstreamed into the regular classes. Sir, <laughs> Of late, we have started around 40 child labor schools in five blocks of uh, Jangepur subdivision. Uh, this is a very uh, new initiative which covers only around 2,000 children of that subdivision. We need more such schools so as to provide education to large number of children who are still left out. Besides that, we have put in concerted efforts in our ongoing programs of Sarv Shikha Vijan, where our main focus is to bring all children of the age of 5 to 14 years within the ambit of uh, school education program. The overall strategy is really to address this issue holistically. That means we need to look at how do we get children into school and keep them in school so that they're not available to be in the workforce. We need to look at uh, policies and programs that the government is instituting to ensure that enforcement is done, that there are other options for families in terms of income generation, so working with women's self-help groups becomes very important. We also need to um, make sure that there's comprehensive strategies and interdepartmental coordination um, because this is a problem that requires different actors coming in at different um, levels to ensure that children are prevented from being in the workforce and then those that are in the workforce need to be taken out. The Supreme Court's judgment on right to education in J.P. Unikrishnan versus the state of Andhra Pradesh in 1993 has already transformed an incremental development goal into an entitlement of all children up to 14 years by pronouncing the right to education to be a fundamental right deriving from the right to life itself. The MV Foundation is an exemplary NGO based in Sikandrabad, which has done excellent work for a decade now in freeing rural children, hundreds of thousands of them, in 2,500 villages of Andhra Pradesh and giving them formal school education. The achievement has attracted the Magsese Award for its founder, Dr. Shanta Sinha. Any uh, program on uh, abolition of uh, child labor should first start with the definition of who constitutes child labor. 
and uh, from our experience we have found that the best definition that is possible is to look at all children out of school as child labor and if one will have to work towards abolition of child labor we must put them all into a full time formal day school. The reason why one would emphasize on defining children out of school as child labor is to see that it encompasses children who are working for wage, encompasses children who are working without wage. In fact, it encompasses all those children who are working in agriculture uh, and who are working as farm servants, as bonded laborers. It also encompasses those girls who are doing invisible, unnoticed, hidden work for the families in fetching water, fuel wood, carrying siblings uh, and uh, uh, perhaps a wide range of children who would otherwise been left out if they were not defined as uh, child labor. Camp of the Cochi, Camp Cochinanka, Malavana, Malin Tipote, Malanaki, and the Akote, Malama, Mala Jim, Jim, and Malavana, Malavata, good other Panje pits in Serpotala Galsudu, Paspula Galsudu, Kankare, Vokada, Bai Panki, the Oliste, Malaral, Ulavan, Malana Kopaka, Malas, Mabur, Sarkadi, Osarn and Vota, Malas, Sadukuntam, Sadukuntan and Antegura, my Amal, the Lerer, Mamam of Dandu. Working children again are, of course subjected to discrimination, social discrimination because of the caste in which they are born. In fact, if you see most of the children working in rural areas, they do all kinds of jobs. They tend the cattle of the master, they clean the cattle shed, they take their cattle out for grazing. But yet, in most cases, these children are not, they are never allowed inside the house of the upper caste landowners. The children, even if they are given some food, the children are made to sit outside and eat the food. So in terms of child labor, it may affect all children in the same way. But Dalit children are doubly exploited in terms of social as well as economic. Alanti pillal ni man itlanti school slogan le kunte government school slogan this kra alanti mano yetu vanti custom jali. Yeng jesto reali jail sir reali reali jail sir. Oh sir reali cheshi pillal panu bo urdo panu bo kunda balanu badi lo sadu kunla anka sir reali jail sir. Inchinti kelly hai manch maat laval chopal sahi ka karano anta baubir taro sadu bounty de. Make a custom, make a puny with a customer than Chupka's for Christmas. Talidan Rupko Pote? Talidan Rupko Pote? Talidan Rupko Pote? Police or Jabaza? Teach. Collector. 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 Police. Teacher. Nurse. Then Chadu can eat a collector galan cutina. His name is today. We are guilty of many errors and many faults. But our worst crime is abandoning the children, neglecting the fountain of life. Many of the things we need can wait. The child cannot wait. Right now is the time his bones are being formed, his blood is being made, and his senses are being developed. To him we cannot answer tomorrow. His name is today. Bostunam, Bostunam, Pillalam, Are Patilukam, Mande, Mande. Bostunam, Bostunam, Pillalam, Are Patilukam, Mande, Mande. Bostunam, Bostunam, Pillalam, Are Patilukam, Mande, Mande. Bostunam, Bostunam, Pillalam, Are Maruangani Pani Baram Mosinam Pani Baram Mosinam Pani Baram Mosinam Ped 